All right, so this video covers a possible extra credit type of question that you might see on exam one. And this example is from section 2.5. If you go on Blackboard and the worked out solutions or worked out problems for chapter two, you also see this problem. Um, so it's problem number 45. It's going to be use implicit differentiation to find the equation of the tangent line of the ellipse x squared over 2 plus y squared over 8 equal to 1 at the point 1 comma 2. And then the difficult part is going to be part b, show that the equation of the tangent line to the ellipse x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equal to 1 at the point x, um, x naught y naught. That's how you say uh, x with the subscript 0 is pronounced x. It's pronounced x naught. Um, is x naught times x over a squared plus y naught times y over b squared is equal to 1, where a and b are real numbers that are not 0. All right, so part b is going is to be the difficult part. Uh, not like the whole thing's a difficult problem, but part B is definitely harder than part A since you don't have an explicit numbers that you're using. Uh, whereas part A, you at least have two and eight are real numbers to work with. <clears throat> All right, so let's get started. So for tangent line, What do we need to do? We need to first uh, differentiate, find the derivative. Then we find the slope using the derivative and the given point. And then finally, after we get the slope, we are good to find the equation for the tangent line. All right, so that's the process. So I'll write the problem over again. Um, and again, we're doing part A first. So before I find the derivative for me, it's useful to write this instead of x squared over two. I like to write this as just one half times x squared because it, it'll be easier, at least in my opinion for, it's not really easier, it just looks nice, easier to me personally um, when I find the derivative. And then y squared over eight is the same thing as one eighth uh, y squared. All right, so I just rewrote it like that. Now I'm gonna find the derivative. So I differentiate both sides with respect to x. I know the derivative of the right side is zero since one is a constant. Now I apply the derivative derivative operator to each term and I'll factor out the one half and then it'll be d dx of x squared and then factor out the one eighth so plus one over eight and then d dx of y squared and this is equal to zero since the derivative of one is zero because it's a constant. Now by power rule I'm going to have one half times and then derivative of x squared becomes 2x since it's 2x to the 2 minus 1. Um, then I'll have plus 1 eighth and the derivative of y squared same as 2x but it'll be 2y and make sure to attach a y prime since I'm taking the derivative involving the variable y. 
All right, so what do I have? Um, so two, 1 half times 2, that just gives me x. Uh, 1 eighth times 2, that gives me 1 fourth. And then we want to get y prime by itself. So I will subtract x from both sides. So then I have 1 fourth y, y prime. Um, equal to negative x, and I want y prime by itself. So I need to get rid of the 1 fourth times y. So if I wanted to get rid of the 1 fourth, I would multiply both sides by 4, or 4 over 1. And then, so that gets rid of those. Then I have y, y prime equal to negative 4x. And last, I divide by y to get y prime by itself. All right, so the derivative uh, is y prime equal to negative 4x over y. All right, now I find the slope. And the point is 1 comma 2. So the slope is found by plugging in the coordinates into the derivative. So plug 1 in for x and 2 in for y. So m is going to equal y prime plugging in 1 comma 2, which would be negative 4 times 1 over 2. It's a negative 4 over 2, so negative 2 is the slope. All right, so now we are good to find the tangent line. So the tangent line, I use the point slope form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And I just use the point that's given to us in the question, um, x1 and y1, so that's y minus 2, equal to negative 2 times x minus 1. All right, and that is the answer for the first part. Um, you could write it in slope-intercept form, and in slope-intercept form, it's y equals negative 2x plus 4. All right, so that's the answer for part A. Now part B is the difficult part. All right, so the part B is showing that the equation of the tangent line to the ellipse a, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equal to 1 at the point x naught y naught is, equal, is uh, the following, x naught times x over a squared plus y naught times y over b squared equal to 1. So that's what we're um, trying to show. And we're first approach the problem like we did in the previous problem. We're finding the derivative, then the slope, and then the equation of the tangent line. Again, so step one is find the derivative y prime. That's what we're trying to do first. I'm going to rewrite the ellipse like I did in the previous problem, where I wrote it as like 1 half times x squared and 1 eighth times y squared. I'm just going to write this as 1 over a squared times x squared. And then plus 1 over b squared times y squared. And that's just a personal preference. You don't have to write it like that. But the point is a and b are numbers. So I'm going to treat it like I did in the previous question. So in first, uh, take the derivative of both sides. So 
you like in the previous question where I factored out the one half, factor out the one over eight, I'm gonna do the same for here. I'm gonna factor out one over a squared and then focus on taking the derivative of x squared. Factor out the one over b squared. Since these are just numbers, um, and then times the derivative of y squared. And then that's going to equal zero because the derivative of one is it's a constant. All right, so I have one over a squared times the derivative of x squared. x squared is 2x, so it'll be one over a squared times 2x. Then plus one over b squared, and it's 2y because it's the derivative of y squared. But then I have the y prime, since that's involving the variable y. All right, so I want to get y prime by itself. So what I'm going to do is focus on bringing this term over to the other side. And um, so I would subtract that whole thing. And um, if you want, you could say that's 2x over a squared. but so I'll be subtracting that. So then those cancel out. And I have 1 over b squared. Uh, and then 2y, y prime equal to negative 2x squared over a squared. I want to get y prime by itself. I'll do multiply both sides by b squared or b squared over 1. So that way th those cancel out. And then I can also get rid of the 2y by dividing both sides by 2y. All right, so I'm also dividing by 2y. Those cancel out, the b squares cancel out, and I'm left with y prime. Okay, so the negative 2 over 2 divide out. And then I have negative x squared, and then we b squared up top. And, oh, I made a mistake. This is negative 2x. All right, so it's negative x b squared over uh, y a squared. All right, and this is the derivative. Our second step is to find the slope. And that's plugging in the point. And the point they give us, I've tried to put it in green for the coordinates, this x naught, y naught, which are supposed to be just some numbers. All right, so I plug this in for x and then a y naught in for y. So that means the slope. So if y prime x naught y naught is going to equal to negative x be negative x naught and then b squared over instead of y it's y naught and then a squared. So that's our slope. I'll put it in a different color and let's say I put it in green. All right, now I'm finding the tangent line. All right, and I use point slope form. All 
all right, our slope is this. So that's what I'll plug in for M. And then I use for the X1, Y1, I use X naught, Y naught. That's the point that they give us in the question. So it's going to be Y minus Y naught equal to all of this in green. And then times X minus X naught. Normally we would be done here. I'm just make a comment normally. So normally we'd be done here because this is the tangent line. But they want us to show that the tangent line um, is x naught times x over a squared plus y naught times y over b squared equals one. That's what they want us to show. So what we're gonna do is manipulate what we already have. So we're gonna manipulate this. So that it becomes what we want. That it becomes uh, this. All right, so I'm gonna write the uh, what we have over again. All right, so that's the end goal is to re rewrite this. And let's see. So I guess I'll go ahead and distribute this. So y minus y naught equal two. And then I have negative x naught b squared times x. All of that's over y naught times a squared. And then minus, and then I have x naught times x naught makes negative x naught squared. So technically, I want to be thorough about it, I'll write it as negative x naught times negative x naught. Which makes it positive, but I'll be thorough. All right, so that's distributing, and I'll just go ahead and write it all in the same color now. So it's y minus y naught equal to negative x naught b squared x over y naught a squared then plus, and I have x naught squared, and then b squared over y naught a squared. All right, that's what we have so far. And let's see, notice this portion. Um, Actually, no, sorry, the other one. This has the uh, x naught 
x part. All right, that's just an observation. Um, what I think I'll do now is, um, since that does have the x not x part, I'm going to bring this over to the left side. All right, so just add x naught and I'll reorder it so it'd be x and naught and then x. So it's more obvious than b squared over y naught a squared. So I add that to both sides. All right, so those cancel out. Then I have the, what you have is in purple, and then plus y minus y naught equal to x naught squared b squared over y naught a squared. Okay, so what we want, so we have the x naught times x part, but what we want is it to end up with a squared on the denominator. So we want it to just have the a squared, which means I need to get rid of the y naught and b squared. So what I can do is multiply everything on the left side but what I do on the left side, I have to do on the right side. I can multiply by the reciprocal of b squared y naught, which will be y naught over b squared. So I multiply that to that side, and then I also have to do it to the other side. So that way, when I distribute it, Why not? Um, I'll be, yeah, I'll just put every step in. So it'll be y naught over b squared, and then x naught, x b squared over y naught a squared, then plus, and then it's y naught over b squared times y. then minus y naught times y naught over b squared. And I'm putting every, every detail. You, you could skip some steps, but I just figured I'd go and put everything. Um, so that's times y naught and then equal to. Now on the right side, the b squares divide out, so I have x naught squared times y naught over, oh, actually the y naughts also cancel out, so I'm gonna erase that. So those cancel out too. So I just have x naught squared over a squared. All right, I hope that step makes sense. So why I'm multiplying by y naught over b squared is because we want our tangent line to have x naught times x over a squared. So we have x naught times x and then the a squared in the denominator. I just need to get rid of the y naught in the denominator and the b squared in the numerator. So the reciprocal of that is y naught over b squared. And so that's what I multiply on one side, I have to do it on the other side. That way, these b naughts or b squares are gonna cancel out and the y naughts are gonna cancel out. So I'll be left with x naught times x over a squared uh, plus 
uh, y naught times y over b squared, and I have minus y naught squared over b squared, and then equal to x naught squared over a squared. All right, we're getting really close to the answer because all of this is what we need on the left side. So I need all of that on the left side. Which means I need to get rid of the y naught squared over b squared by adding this to both sides. Okay, so that's all going to be equal to x naught squared over a squared plus y naught squared over b squared. All right, so we have the left side. It matches what we want. All right, now the right side has one. So what we need this to be equal to one. It is. Because this is an equation for an ellipse. The standard equation for ellipse. Well, I'm calling it standard, but that's usually because they use this to most, most represent uh, an ellipse be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. So this has that same structure. Since it has that same structure, this is going to be equal to 1 since it's an ellipse. And so we've, we're done now. We've shown that we get the tangent line to be equal to 1. That's the equation that they want us to end up with. We've shown. So we're done pretty much here. So I'll put a check mark. So we've shown that the equation of the tangent line is what we have x naught over times x over a squared plus y naught times y over b squared equal to 1. And so this is really a proof. I just never explicitly said it. So really, this is a, the proof. Proof is done. We, we proved it. All right, so I'll recap just this second part. Now, part, part B. And so the objective here was to show that the equation of the tangent line to this given ellipse, just some standard ellipse, x squared of, over a squared plus y squared over b squared equal to 1 at the point x naught y naught is this, x naught times x over a squared plus y naught times y over b squared equal to 1. That's what we needed to show. Well, the first couple steps, what we've been doing for these problems, like the previous video, we find the derivative, y prime. And that's what all of this was, was finding the derivative. And we got the derivative to be this. 
y prime is equal to negative x times b squared over y a squared. All right, then the second step is to use the derivative to find the slope by plugging in the coordinates of the given point. Well, the coordinates of the given point is x naught and y naught. So that means our slope is basically the same thing as the derivative. It's just instead of x and y, you have x naught and y naught. And then step three is finding the tangent line. And I use point slope form. And our green value is the slope. And I used x naught, y naught for x1, y1, and the equation or for point slope form. And I said, normally we would be done here, but they want us to show that the tangent line is what x naught times x over a squared plus y naught times y over b squared equal to one. So we're gonna manipulate what we have for the tangent line so that it follows this format. And so what I did was I wrote down what we have for the tangent line and I distributed the slope that gave us uh, negative x naught b squared times x over y naught a squared minus x times, or minus x naught times negative x naught b squared over y naught a squared. And the negative x naught b squared x part, that first term has the x naught x part. And what we're trying to show is that that needs to be on the left side and hopefully manipulate it so it's just x naught times x over a squared. So I just added that term to both sides. Um, and then from there, I wanted to get x naught times x over a squared. So I needed to get rid of the y naught and the b squared part. So I multiplied by its reciprocal. All right, that's what's going on here. And after I multiply by the reciprocal, I get the following. And notice on the right side, I can cancel out the b squares and the y naughts. So that's why I get x squared over a squared on the right side. All right, so this is what we get after we do that. And you'll see that we have y naught times y over b squared as a result. And that's also part of what we want for the left side. And we have the x naught x over a squared. So we needed to move the term that has negative y naught squared over b squared by adding that to both sides. And that's where we get up, we end up with what we have for the left side, what we're trying to show. And the right side required a knowledge of ellipses. So we need it to equal one for the right side. And the right side is an, is an ellipse. It has the standard form for an ellipse. It's just instead of x squared, it's x naught squared. And then instead of y squared, it's y naught squared. But since it has that structure, that whole thing that I dash in gold is equal to one because it's an ellipse. All right, so then I just put one in that spot and I'm done. That's, and we have the equation that we needed. All right, so that's it for this video. I would. This isn't in, uh, I wouldn't expect this as a test question per se, but I might put this as an extra credit or at least something similar.